before I begin to talk about this wonderful award that's named in memory of our former executive director, Cam Hamilton, I want to let you all know that last year we were under the cloud of COVID, and, but life goes on. And this chamber moved on and, and moved very successfully. And thanks to the, the vision and the leadership of your chamber executive director, a special thanks to Kelly St. Germain and our member services committee. Uh, we were able to do a special recognition for this and the special nonprofit award. And I would be remiss if we don't take a moment to offer our appreciation to last year's winners of this distinguished award, and that is Dawn and Mary Ann Moore from McDonald's. We are so grateful that they chose to make Ash County their home many years ago to raise their two boys and to give back in such a way they have since uh, remodeled and added a second drive through to their wonderful business. The most popular business, I think, uh, there on the four lane as you're coming into West Jefferson, it's almost like a mini welcome center, um, but they continue to contribute so meaningfully to our community and we're just delighted you are here. And now, first let me share about this award. The Cabot Hamilton Community Advocacy Award recognizes an individual who exhibits genuine love for Ashe County, works collaboratively to bring people and organizations together for the betterment of the community, and, dis and demonstrates distinguished yet selfless leadership. In creating this award, we also honor the memory of our former executive director who served for eight years in that capacity, for several years prior, provided distinguished leadership as a board member and former board chair. There is no doubt that Cabot exhibited a deep love and appreciation for Ashe County and used his gifts to serve collaboratively and with vision to ensure an even brighter future for this special corner of North Carolina that we all call home. He would be so, so pleased with how far we've come. The 2021 recipient has fostered a legacy of beauty across our county through collaborative leadership and service. A 40-year resident of Ashe County, this individual has exhibited what love for community is all about. From serving as a volunteer and later board member of a local organization, she assumed the helm of said organization in 1998. And since that time, the arts have continued to flourish. This one individual applied her own unique brushstroke of creativity, super smarts, grace, professionalism, determination, and tremendous work ethic to build a rural-based arts council into one of the best in the state. Borrowing a few superlatives from the musical tribute at her retirement reception, some of you were there, for tonight's big reveal, yes, I am speaking of the incomparable, the inspirational, the sensational Jane Lennon. for Terry and Jane to remain standing there because we've got more to share. So now that you know who it is, let us share just a bit more. Leading a local arts council on a small budget in a rural community like West Jefferson required many hands and busy feet in the form of volunteers and the director of this single nonprofit managed to have a free flowing river of volunteers at any one time. From setting up exhibits, to baking sweets and savories for art shows and theater receptions, to manning art stations at the annual Spring Fest and very special arts festival, just to name a few. She did all that and more. My own personal connection to Jane came not long after I returned home to Ashe County, husband in tow, when we signed up for a tandem term on the board of directors. A deft move on Jane's part to get two for one in a single bound. She is one vibrant dynamo of a volunteer recruiting machine. 
and over the years, the Arts Council continued to grow and expand its program throughout the community. In 1993, the council moved to its present home at 303 School Avenue. Now, one area that really stands out to me is what Jane and this organization did to partner with our local schools to give our youth real-time and engaging exposure to the arts. From pursuing and securing grants through the North Carolina Arts Council, Southern Arts, and other sources, she cultivated layers of support to enhance arts access to the arts in our schools and community, and showcased a community of artists through a calendar of themed shows and exhibits at the Ash Art Center, and marrying the backdrop of this visual beauty with an eclectic variety of musical and dramatic programming, can we say Elliot Engel, in that very same space. Another wonderful outlet that Jane helped introduce to our area has been the Missoula Children's Theater. How many of these kids were in Missoula? I know some of you have been involved in that. This is the traveling troupe of two actors and their trunks of costumes and scripts that welcome scores of local youth from kindergarten to high school to be part of a week-long experience of auditions, rehearsals, and two public performances of such classics as Beauty Lou and The Country Beast. <laughs> These delightful shows were attended by adoring parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, neighbors, and even Sunday school teachers. Thanks to this wonderful program in our community, I even count myself among the choir of adoring families of these once little thespians. And we cannot forget the tandem influence and devotion Jane and husband Grady had for the theater, particularly the Ash County Little Theater and her later work with the Ash Civic Center. Their own personal love story, some of you may not know this, but it blossomed in these mountains not far from here while they waited tables and performed at the famed farmhouse restaurant and inn in Blowing Rock. Thankfully, they too discovered Ash County, like the Moors, and made this community their home to raise their two boys, James and Matthew. You simply cannot separate Jane Lennon from the arts, nor can you separate, for, separate her from the pivotal role she played to foster the development of an arts district in West Jefferson and its continuing economic impact. The Arts in Ash served as a foundation, foundational support during the revitalization of downtown, which now features 17 murals, many galleries, and a living, breathing art school named Florence to honor one of our, art, our area's greatest artistic treasures, Florence Thomas. West Jefferson is also home to a literary festival that was born through a collaborative effort of our wonderful Ash County Library with support from the Arts Council, the Friends of the Library, and a talented ensemble of Library and Arts Council volunteers. We see the arts in large and small spaces, on the sides of some 150 barns across our mountain landscape to the exterior walls of some of our downtown buildings, on fire hydrants along our town sidewalks to the walls of homes and museums near and far. We hear the arts through the music of the Kruger brothers who chose to make Northwest North Carolina their home because it reminded them of their native home in Switzerland to local and emerging musical icons, including Wayne Henderson, Helen White, Steve Lewis, Eric Harden, J Josh Scott, Taylan Miller, and JAM program alums, Trey Wellington and Madison Shepard. Jane's sphere of advocacy and service extended beyond the arts to include the local Chamber of Commerce Board, where she has faithfully served for many years, also on our local hospital board of trustees, and just as importantly, to her church, Bethany United Methodist, where she and Grady have led the choral and handbell programs. And yes, you can bet that they have been master recruiters of singers and a slew of dinglings to this day. <laughs> I was just speaking with Rebecca Williams at the Arts Council this week, and she reminded me that Jane was in the county's very first production of The Sound of Music, in which she played the role of Maria, and Grady played Captain Von Trapp. Rebecca, who is known for her talents in costuming the cast, remembered that she had a wedding dress that she hoped Jane could wear in the play, and of course, it fit her just perfectly. In Rebecca's own words, she said, I'll never forget the look on Grady's face when he saw Jane for the first time as Maria in that wedding dress. <laughs> While Jane has garnered numerous recognitions for her efforts over the years, it was particularly meaningful to see her presented with the highest honor that a citizen can receive in North Carolina back in 2013, the Order of the Longleaf Pine. When Jane retired from the Arts Council, it was no ordinary retirement. Thanks to the broad spectrum of volunteers and creatives she has engaged, recruited, conspired with over the years, it was a production. I referenced earlier the special musical tribute inspired from the title tune from Maine that she was starring in the title role. So I'm gonna close with just a few lines from that little ditty. 
Special thanks to Sharon Castle for sharing those lyrics that they wrote especially for her. You lead the arts, but you don't paint, Jane. You act so well, you play any part, Jane. You've taught piano, you are plunking out a tune to beat the band. Your voice is so impressive, you hold all of our hearts in your hand. You lead the choir and dinglings, Jane. You garden and do wonderful things, Jane. You make us feel so special and fun, Jane. Your cookie swap is second to none, Jane. Your special fascinational proved to be inspirational. We think you're absolutely just sensational, Jane. <laughs> Oh my, thank you. Karen, what beautiful words, what a beautiful work of art that I will treasure forever and ever. And, and the nice things that were said were, were done in tandem and in partnership with so many of you, with businesses, with volunteers, with my Arts Council staff, friends, Linda and Rebecca and with, with so many that have served on my boards and committees. And just, we've done great things together. And hasn't it been fun? I've had a ball, had the best job in the world, and I've still got a great job in being a volunteer and getting to live in this wonderful community that we all call home. Thank you. <laughs>